The story of the F-111 Aardvark began in the early 1960s when the U.S. Department of Defense initiated the Tactical Fighter Experimental TFX, program. The goal was to create a single aircraft that could fulfill multiple roles for both the U.S. Air Force and Navy. General Dynamics and Grumman were selected as partners to develop this ambitious aircraft. In 1962, their proposal won the Tactical Fighter Experimental, or TFX, contract, and the F-111 was born. The F-111 was a groundbreaking design that incorporated numerous innovative features. It was the first production aircraft to feature variable geometry wings, also known as swing wings. These wings could be adjusted in flight to optimize performance, allowing the F-111 to excel in both high-speed and low-speed missions. The F-111 was powered by two Pratt & Whitney TF-30 turbofan engines, which gave it impressive speed and range. It could reach a top speed of Mach 2.5 and had an unrefueled range of over 3,000 miles. The F-111 was designed to be versatile and adaptable, with several variants being developed for different mission profiles. The F-111A was the initial production variant, primarily used for tactical strike missions. It featured advanced avionics, terrain-following radar, and an innovative side-by-side -side cockpit layout for improved crew coordination. Over 150 F-111As were produced, with the first aircraft entering service in 1967. The F-111B was a short-lived variant intended for the U.S. Navy as a fleet defense interceptor. However, it was ultimately canceled due to weight and performance issues. The F-111B's experience, though, was not in vain as it led to the development of the F-14 Tomcat, which would become a legendary aircraft in its own right. The F-111C was an export version for the Royal Australian Air Force, which combined the avionics of the F-111A, with the stronger airframe and longer wingspan of the F-111B. Australia received a total of 24 F-111Cs, which served as the backbone of their strike force for decades. The F-111D was an upgraded version with even more advanced avionics, improved engines, and an enhanced navigation and attack system. It was primarily used for precision strike missions. Despite its improvements, only 96 F-111Ds were produced due to cost overruns and technical issues. The F-111E was a simplified, lower-cost variant, which still maintained the impressive performance of the original design. Over 90 F-111Es were built, and served with distinction in various operations. The F-111F was the final production variant, featuring upgraded engines, avionics, and the capability to carry more advanced munitions, such as laser-guided bombs. 106 F-111Fs were produced, with many of them participating in key combat missions in the 1980s and 1990s. Finally, the EF-111A Raven was an electronic warfare variant, designed for radar jamming and suppression of enemy air defenses. A total of 42 Ravens were converted from existing F-111As and served until the late 1990s. The F-111 Aardvark was a pioneer in several technological advancements that would later become standard in military aviation. The F-111's advanced avionics suite was a significant leap forward in aircraft technology. Its terrain-following radar allowed pilots to maintain a constant altitude during low-level flight, enabling them to avoid enemy radar and deliver their payloads with pinpoint accuracy. Another innovation was the F-111's escape capsule. In the event of an emergency, the entire cockpit could be jettisoned as a single unit, protecting the crew during ejection at high speeds or low altitudes. The F-111 Aardvark served with distinction in various conflicts and operations throughout its operational history. The F-111 first saw combat during the Vietnam War, where it was initially deployed in 1968. It quickly gained a reputation for its ability to deliver precision strikes in all weather conditions, thanks to its advanced terrain following radar and low-level flight capabilities. Over the course of the war, F-111s flew more than 4,000 missions and achieved an impressive mission success rate of over 80%. In 1986, 
The F-111 played a key role in Operation El Dorado Canyon, the U.S. bombing raid against Libya. The F-111Fs of the 48th Tactical Fighter Wing demonstrated the aircraft's long-range strike capabilities, flying over 6,400 miles round-trip from England to Libya and back. The F-111 successfully attacked key Libyan military targets, proving their effectiveness in real-world combat scenarios. The F-111's most significant contribution came during Operation Desert Storm in 1991. The aircraft excelled in the conflict, delivering 80% of the laser-guided bombs dropped by the U.S. Air Force. It was also during this operation that the EF-111A Ravens showcased their capabilities in suppressing enemy air defenses, protecting coalition aircraft from radar-guided threats. In addition to its service with the U.S. Air Force, the F-111 also served with the Royal Australian Air Force from 1973 until 2010. The Australian F-111s participated in various regional exercises and deployments, demonstrating their long-range strike and reconnaissance capabilities. The F-111 was retired from the U.S. Air Force in 1996, with the EF-111A Raven following in 1998. As more advanced aircraft, like the F-15E Strike Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon, took over their roles, the F-111's time came to an end. The F-111 Aardvark may have been retired, but its legacy lives on in the innovations it brought to the field of military aviation. Its pioneering swing-wing design, advanced avionics, and versatile mission profiles set the stage for future generations of combat aircraft, influencing the development of planes like the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II.